Hey everyone, today on Homeschool Arcade, we're going to be covering an introduction to animal biology, or in other words, zoology. Let's go check it out. So who do we turn to when there's a big problem on the rise? Bee populations declining and suddenly we're seeing that plant life isn't reproducing the way it used to. Or an animal's being introduced into a local ecosystem that's throwing off the entire food chain. Or what if an animal is about to go extinct? Who do you call in that kind of situation? The person you're supposed to call is an animal biologist, or in other words, the zoologist. Now, when you hear me talk about zoology and the zoologist, you might think to yourself, well, what is that exactly? Usually when I hear the word zoologist, I usually think about a zoo. Well, what zoology is specifically is it's the broad study of all animal life. And within zoology, there's a lot of different areas of study. It can include just about anything you can imagine when it comes to animals. It could be how they develop out in the wild, their social patterns with one another, their, their dietary habits, or maybe even things like where, where are they most popular, where are they supposed to thrive and exist the most. These are the things that a zoologist studies and records. And then from that information, we're able to make decisions and how to handle all these different types of problems that exist out in the world. Now, some zoologists you may have already heard about would include people like maybe the Krat Brothers or Jack Hanna or my personal favorite, no offense to the others, but Steve Irwin. I always enjoyed uh, learning from Steve Irwin about these things. But we need to ask ourselves, and if we're learning about what zoology is, let's talk a little bit about what is the value that zoology has. Let's take the bee, for example. Right now, presently, we're seeing honeybee populations decrease left and right. And because of that, we now know that because of that decreased population, we're seeing it impacts plant life, and therefore, if plant life is impacted, then local ecosystems, and if local ecosystems are impacted, then you know other animals will be impacted. And yes, you, as a human being, are also impacted by that as well. But you want to know something, we would never even know that if it wasn't for the study of a good zoologist. And so what does a zoologist do when they see this situation? Well, then they begin to study the patterns of honeybees. They begin to learn what are the things that are causing them to die off? Are there certain things that we as human beings are doing to cause them to die off? And then from their studies, then they report it. And what we're starting to see is a lot of people are starting to take very much a renewed interest in honeybees. And the hope is that the population will start to increase and this will become less of an issue. Or here's another example, the emerald ash borer. This is a foreign beetle that's been in our forest recently and what it does is it, is it burrows into the ash trees and it causes them to, to rot and die. And in many cases you'll see uh, even in local towns where these trees are located, they end up having to be marked and chopped down. And we're seeing huge droves of these trees being chopped down because of these ash borers and because of zoologists that are determining where the, ash, the emerald ash borer is. Well, then they can put out warnings and remind people to whatever uh, trees that they're chopping down for firewood, for example, that they need to keep that in their local area to help keep the spread of this particular beetle from spreading to other areas as well that is causing destruction to our plant life. Or, well, here's kind of a disgusting one. I find it disgusting because I, I just, the lampreys. Yeah. Lampreys made an appearance in the Great Lakes in the 1800s. And as a foreign invasive species, it caused a huge impact not only on the natural ecosystems, but also in the local businesses. It had economic consequences as well. But thanks to zoologists and the efforts of the Great Lakes Fishery Commission, they're credited with one of the only successful programs of dealing with water vertebrates pest control. And thanks to their work, the lamprey population has been reduced by 90%.
So as a result of this great work, not only is balance returning to the Great Lakes ecologically, but the region and the people itself are doing better financially as well. And it was a zoologist that came up with that from their studies. So if you think of just how many different life forms exist in the planet, how many different types of animals and insects exist here on, on just our planet and in the oceans and the forests and any ecosystem you can imagine, well then really the value for a zoologist that is committed to their study to find a way of applying their work, it's nearly limitless. It's only limited by the diversity of our own planet. FYI, for your information. Hi, we're the FYI sisters, right, Helena? Yeah. So today we're doing our first FYI. Okay, let's start. FYI, for your information, there are 1.2 million known species of animals. Scientists estimate that one, less than 15% of all animal life has been discovered. Now, one of the things we want to bring up as we're talking about some of these subjects, if you're interested in becoming a zoologist, an animal biologist, we thought it might be helpful for you to know kind of what are some of the jobs out there for individuals that want to study this. And I know what you're thinking. The first thing you think about is a zoo and someone that is a zookeeper and working in there. And that is a possible job, but there's many, many more out there that you may not be aware of. One might include a, a, a nutritionist for animals, someone that works on, on understanding the animal diet. Or there's field research and field technicians that go out there hands-on and study wildlife and study the interactions of all the different creatures out there. There's many different areas where maybe you're going to go into toxicology, study the venom of certain creatures, and a zoologist is actually able to go into those fields of study as well. Some individuals actually go into writing and they, they start to write in scientific journals and scientific diaries and they, they publish them for everyone's work. And then of course there's also those that you see on television or maybe on YouTube or something like that. But really there's a great number of opportunities out there for zoologists. So if you find that you are interested in learning more about animal biology or zoology, then follow along in our videos on our zoology topic and learn a little bit more with us as we go through this together. And then click like and subscribe to our channel and follow us on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter. So let's go learn this together. Let's get to it.